Hello Year 10, welcome back to another maths video. Today we're going to be learning about surface area and nets. Now this is something that we need to kind of visualize what surface area and what a net actually is. <clears throat> so I have here a piece of paper here and you can imagine when I fold this up in a certain way it becomes a three dimensional shape okay so it's no longer just a two-dimensional shape it is now a three-dimensional shape so area we measure in units squared which means there are two dimensions uh, it's flat two dimensions you know width and breadth or length or whatever you want to call it um, and then we talk about three-dimensional shapes that have three dimensions. So they have a length, a breadth, as well as a height. Okay. However, we can consider each of these surfaces on each side of this shape as an area. Okay. So there's sort of a flat area on each surface of this three-dimensional shape. And we call that surface area. So we're dealing with 3D shapes, but we're just thinking about how much space, how much area is on the surface of that object. Okay, now this is really important uh, in certain areas like biology. So the way that your lungs work, the way that your intestines work, all has to do with uh, surface area. If you've ever crushed up something to help it dissolve easier, that's because you're increasing the surface area. Okay, so in science, in the physical world, the surface area um, makes a big difference in how things behave. Uh, today, we're just going to be looking at how can we convert a 3D object into a 2D net. Okay, so here is our 3D object. It has all these different faces, and we can uh, mentally fold it out into a flat shape like this. Okay, so you can see here, I now have a two-dimensional object, which is the same object, just flattened out. I can then refold it back up to turn it back into the three-dimensional shape that we are talking about. Okay, so we're going to look at a few questions like this. Um, and we have to be able to mentally, uh, we have to be able to mentally uh, open these shapes up. Uh, to turn them into their two-dimensional nets. Okay, so here is a solid. So it's a three-dimensional shape or a solid, and we need to fold it up in our heads and draw what that net will look like. So um, what I need to do is I need to pick a middle face. I'm going to pick this bottom rectangle here as my middle face and I'm going to consider all of the other things uh, that uh, will fold out from that uh, shape. So I'm going to have these kind of trapeziums on either side that fold. Uh, let's make sure I get this right. It's going to look like this. You can see there the trapeziums on the front and the back are the two other faces that I've just sort of folded down onto flat onto the page. I'm then going to have this front rectangle here. Okay, I'm going to have this back rectangle here. So the back rectangle. And I'm also going to have this top rectangle which is going to be a little bit smaller than my base one and I can just draw that on here so you can sort of see those edge ones would fold up this part here would fold to make the lid and then these two trapeziums would fold inwards to remake my solid shape so you just got to do a bit of mental gymnastics to create the shape on your head and flatten it onto the page okay draw a net for this triangular prism. So I'm going to do the same thing here, but this time we're going to mark the faces and edge lengths 
on our diagram. So again, I'm going to start with this bottom face and it's a rectangle. So let's draw that rectangle out. And I need to draw its dimensions. So we've got a six centimetre side and we've got a 10 centimetre side here. Okay, now we're gonna think about, what about these front and back faces? We've got two triangles, two triangles that I can draw. Okay, we've already got our six centimeter thing there, but this is gonna be five centimeters. And on the same, on the other side, you're gonna have five centimeters there. Let's just pretend that joined up. Okay, oh. And then this long part of the triangle is also going to be five or seven centimeters, sorry. So you've got a five centimeter side, a six centimeter side, and you've got a seven centimeter side here. Now we just need to do this front face and this back face here. So they're both rectangles. So we've got 10 centimeters one side and this is gonna be seven centimeters. And then our back rectangle has a 10 centimeter side and a five centimeter side, five centimeters. Okay, so we've sort of folded out our shape again. The triangle bits go down that way, the rectangle bits go down that way. And we've drawn in all the dimensions that match with the different sides. The tricky thing is realizing this rectangle here has a, is on that slanted edge, okay? And its length is gonna be that seven centimeter side that matches up with this seven centimeter side on the triangle. Okay, let's do one more question here. We're gonna draw the net for this rectangular prism showing the lengths of its edges. Let's do that first part first. So I'm gonna put that base rectangle as my first. Um, let's draw it this way. That's the base there. It's eight centimeters long. It's three centimeters wide. And then I'm going to have these front and back ones here too. So we've got these ones, except they are five centimeters wide each. And now I'm just going to do this face here and the back face here, which is gonna be three centimeters by five centimeters. Okay, and you, you should see all of the sort of sides sort of match up. You've got a five centimeter side next to a five centimeter side. When they fold up, that's gonna be the same edge there. Uh, so they have to be the same dimensions. Okay, now, what we need to do for part B is a little bit tricky. So bear with me, make sure you're listening. We're gonna calculate the surface area of the prism. Now the surface area is just gonna be the area of all of these faces combined. Now the tricky thing with this is it's really easy to miss a face, okay? So we have to be careful, we have to be systematic in our approach. We need a plan before we go into calculating uh, to make sure that we don't miss anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label all of the different faces with its own area. So area one is gonna be this bottom face here. Oh, you know what I've done? I've actually forgotten a face, haven't I? I've forgotten the top face. Okay, at the moment when I close my box, there would be no lid based on this net. I need to add an extra rectangle to make sure that there's gonna be a lid that closes on top. So I'm gonna put it here. Okay, it's gonna have that three centimeter width. We can write that in again. And it's gonna have an eight centimeter length there. Okay, so that's why you gotta be careful, you gotta be really careful, make sure you don't forget anything. So part B, we've got A1, the bottom face, and we've also got an A1 at the top. They're gonna to be the same area, both of those, because they have the same dimensions. Now I've also got this one here on the side and this one here on the side, and they're gonna have the same area. So I'm gonna call that A2 and A2. And now I've got the front face 
and the back face, which are going to be the same. So I'm going to call that area three and area three. So the surface area is going to equal two times A1 plus two times A2 plus two times A3, because there are two identical faces uh, for each of those different kinds of rectangle that all have different dimensions. So for A1, it's going to be three centimeters times eight centimeters. That's the same for the top face and the bottom face. Oops. So let's write that out. It's going to be two because we've got two of them times three times eight. So A1, that's its area, three times eight, we've got two of the same faces, plus two times, and then A2, uh, these small ones, are gonna be three times five each. And then plus two times A3, A3 here, we've got A3 here, they are five times eight. So they're actually our biggest ones, five times eight. Okay. So to find out my total area, I'll need to um, I'll need to use my uh, calculator. Okay, I can bring that across. So it's going to be two times three times eight plus two times three times five plus two times five times eight. So just make sure you get the pluses and the times in the right place. You've got three different kinds of shapes and they're all added together. And we get our final surface area here, 158. Now, because it, we're just talking about the surface area, the units are still squared, centimeters squared in this example. We're not talking about cubed here. We're not talking about volume. We're just talking about the area on the outside of the shape. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video and good luck with the practice questions and I will see you in the next video.